from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 29th, 2021. Three Jewish-Israeli filmmakers who have been imprisoned in Nigeria for almost three weeks are back safely in Israel. Noam Andrew Liebman, Edouard David Ben Naim, and Rudy Rockman, who has been a repeat guest here on JBS, were released two days ago after being detained on July the 9th by members of the Nigerian Department of State Services, falsely suspecting them of having contact with Biafran separatists. The three were in the country to film a documentary about its Jewish community and they said they were held in inhumane, horrendous conditions. Israel's foreign minister, Yair Lapid, thanked the many who worked to get the three released, including the Nigerian authorities and the deputy ambassador in Nigeria who worked, Lapid said, tirelessly with the French and U.S. embassies there, also noting the help of the local Chabad who provided kosher food for the three men. The three shared a photo from just after their release, thanking, they wrote, the many who sent thoughts, prayers, and actions that led to our liberation. Azerbaijan officially opened its trade and tourism office in Tel Aviv today. The country's economic minister, Mikhail Jabarov, together with Israel's tourism minister, Yoel Razvezov, inaugurated the office, which Israel's tourism ministry called a preliminary step to the opening of the Azeri embassy in Israel. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield addressed the United Nations Security Council's briefing on the Middle East yesterday, where she reiterated that the U.S. remains committed to a two-state solution. And she said we will continue to oppose efforts to single out Israel unfairly in U.N. forums. Thomas Greenfield also encouraged continued restraint from Israel and from the Palestinians to maintain calm after the conflict in May between Israel and terror group Hamas in Gaza. She also addressed Hamas's holding the remains of two IDF soldiers, Hadar Golden and Aron Shaul, as well as holding two Israeli civilians, Avira Mengistu and Hisham al-Sayed. Mr. President, in late June, I had the honor to meet Leah Golden. Her son, Hadar, was killed in Hamas by Hamas militants, and his body remains in Gaza. For the last seven years, the Goldens have advocated endlessly for his return. When I met with her, I promised her I would do everything possible to support her efforts to have her son return. No parent, no one, should have to endure such a wretched experience. The United States will continue to fiercely advocate for the return of Israeli soldiers killed in action in Gaza, as well as the return of Israeli civilians held captive there. Israel will start giving its residents that are aged 60 years old and above a third coronavirus vaccine dose. Health Ministry Director General Nachman Ash instructed that the booster shots should begin next week. Israel is among the first countries in the world to approve a third dose following Hungary and Turkey. Bennett Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, a.k.a. Ben and Jerry, said they stand by their former company's decision to stop selling in the quote-unquote occupied Palestinian territory. In an op-ed published yesterday by the New York Times, Cohen and Greenfield, who are Jewish, called the announcement one of the most important decisions the company has made in its 43-year history. They said they support Israel and that the decision is not a rejection of Israel. It is a rejection of Israeli policy. Also claiming that the statement did not endorse the BDS movement the boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign that seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel. 
Meanwhile, the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations shared that CEO William Daroff, seen recently here on JBS regarding the Ben & Jerry's decision, received a letter from Unilever, the current owners of Ben & Jerry's, saying that they have never expressed any support for the BDS movement and have no intention of changing that position and confirming their commitment to continue doing business in Israel. The conference tweeted that the response from Unilever does not go nearly far enough, writing they should rescind the Ben & Jerry's decision as boycotts of Israel are discriminatory and further inflame tensions. Well, it was a nail-biting first game for Israel's baseball team at the Tokyo Olympics today. The game against South Korea that went into extra innings was tied 5-5, to five, when in the 10th inning, South Korea was up at bat, bases loaded, and its batter was hit by a pitch from Team Israel, forcing in the winning run. Team Israel tweeted, heartbreaking loss, but that they would be back tomorrow to face Team USA. And we will have more on Team Israel on tonight's L'Chaim at 9 o'clock. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, July the 29th at 7 o'clock. It's Talmud Study. At 8, Jeffrey Gurok talks about sports and American Jewry. At 9 o'clock, as I mentioned, a close look at Israel's baseball team as manager Eric Holtz, pitcher Eric Brodkowitz, and general manager Peter Kurz discuss the team's journey and the thrill of winning a spot at the Olympics. That's tonight on L'Chaim with Mark Golub. At 10, the Jake Ehrenreich Show. And coming up next, it's Israel in Style. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 29th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.